Cinderella, retold by Barbara Carlin, illustrated by James Marshall, read by Grandpa Tom. Once there was a widower with a kind and beautiful daughter. Life was sweet in their simple cottage until the widower decided to remarry. Not knowing the ways of the world, he married a vain and horrid woman, whose two daughters were as vain and horrid as she. What a stupid little house, they said. The widower's daughter was made to work like a servant in her own house. She was soon run ragged, washing, ironing, scrubbing, dusting, and cooking heaps of food. The poor girl no longer had a bed of her own, and had to sleep among the ashes and cinders and from that time on they called her Cinderella. Now it happened that the king of the land had a handsome son. The king's great desire was to see his son married. He decided to give a ball and invite all the fair maidens of the realm. When the king's messenger delivered the royal invitation, the dreadful stepsisters were overjoyed. Each was convinced that she would win the prince's favor. On the day of the ball, Cinderella was exhausted from trying to make her stepsisters look beautiful. Wouldn't you like to go to the ball? They said, teasing her cruelly. Oh, yes, said Cinderella. Don't be ridiculous, cried the stepsisters. What would a wretched mouse like you do at a fancy ball? And they shrieked with laughter. Thinking themselves beautiful beyond words, the stepsisters left for the ball. Don't be a lazybones while we're away, they said to Cinderella. And think about all the fun we'll be having. After the stepsisters had gone, Cinderella went about her chores. As she worked, she wept bitterly. You look so miserable, child, said a kind voice. Who are you? said Cinderella. I, replied the plump little woman, am your fairy godmother. Please tell me why you are crying. I want so much to go to the ball, said Cinderella. That should not be too difficult to arrange, said the fairy godmother. But you must do as I say. First, fetch me a nice big pumpkin from the garden. Cinderella brought the biggest pumpkin she could find. Now, said the fairy godmother, I will require six white mice and a fine fat rat. Cinderella brought them live from the trap. And finally, said the fairy godmother, I must have two lizards. You might look behind the watering pail. Cinderella did as she was told. With a touch of her wand, the fairy godmother changed the pumpkin into a magnificent golden coach, the mice into six white horses, the rat into a jolly coachman, and the lizards into two sleek footmen. Lovely, the fairy godmother exclaimed. Off you go. Am I to go in rags? said Cinderella. Silly me, said the fairy godmother, and she transformed Cinderella's filthy rags into an elegant gown and on her feet placed a pair of sparkling glass slippers. Now you are ready, said the fairy godmother. But remember this, you must return home before the stroke of midnight, for then all of your finery will change back to what it was. Cinderella promised to obey, and then she was off to the ball. At the palace, the prince learned that an enchanting maiden had arrived, and he greeted her himself. The other guests were puzzled. Who was this beautiful stranger? Completely smitten, the prince had eyes only for Cinderella. They danced every dance. Cinderella found herself deeply in love. She was so happy that she took no notice of the hour. Suddenly the clock began to strike twelve. Remembering the warning, Cinderella ran from the prince's arms, out of the ballroom, and down the steps of the palace. In her haste, she lost one of the glass slippers. Wait, wait, cried the prince. I don't know your name. 
Cinderella's golden coach sped away from the palace, but at the stroke of twelve, the fairy godmother's warning came true. The coach was changed back into a pumpkin, the horses back into mice, the coachman back into a rat, and the footman back into lizards. Cinderella was once again dressed in rags. Discovering the tiny glass slipper, the prince vowed to find and marry the beautiful stranger. He traveled the kingdom far and wide, trying the slipper on every maiden's foot, but it fit no one. Finally, he arrived at Cinderella's house. Me first, cried the elder stepsister, extending her long skinny foot, but she could only manage to get her toes into the slipper. My turn, cried the younger stepsister, thrusting her pudgy foot at the prince. She pushed and shoved, grunted and groaned, but the slipper would not fit. May I try it on? said Cinderella, stepping out of the shadows. The glass slipper fit perfectly on Cinderella's tiny foot. I have found my princess, cried the prince. We shall wed tomorrow. On that festive day the king rejoiced. Generous and forgiving, Cinderella moved her family into the palace and found a lord of the court for each of her stepsisters to marry. Cinderella's fairy godmother moved in, too, just to make sure everyone lived happily ever after. The End